You are listening to the 1964 St. Ledger Race, won by Indiana with Patty in second place and uh, Sadarini third. the outside in third place and then comes Patty who's always been fourth and then bow front leading Indiana those leading six have, haven't changed places at all uh, in the first three furlongs and impact still the leader by about two lengths from Du Soleil who's a length ahead of uh, I Titan on the rails is Patty in fourth place then bow front Indiana then Anselmo and then fighting Charlie as they temporarily go out of sight behind a little hill on the far side and they have a mile to run as they pass the mile post now and it is Impact leading them a great gallop by two lengths from Jules Soleil I Titan well up there is third Patty is fourth making full use of her stamina so too is bow front well in touch and Indiana's there so is Anselmo then Sunseeker fighting Charlie Nicarian and Oncidium and then uh, at the, towards the rear of the field, I can see Sadarini, and last of all, is White Lobo. Now they have about seven furlongs to run. They've reached the halfway mark now, and it is still in the lead, setting a tremendous gallop impact. I Titans come past Du Soleil to be second. Du Soleil is third, and Windmill Girl moving up to be third past uh, Du Soleil, who seems to be dropping back. But the three leaders now, and it is Lester Pigott who's taking I Titan up to join his pacemaker impact with about six furlongs still to race and it's I Titan just the leader now from Windmill Girl on his outside Impact seems to be giving way making ground I can see steadily is bow front Indiana is well in touch as they begin to turn for home four and a half furlongs to race they are turning into the straight and I Titan is in the lead with Windmill Girl up on his outside and these are the two leaders as they come into the straight now with four furlongs still to race and it's in I Titan on the far side in the lead on the sand side, it's Windmill Girl. Indiana's making good headway towards the sand side. So too is Bow Front. Fighting Charlie's trying to come, and a dog is attempting to join in the race on the sand side and has run right across. Uh, three furlongs to run. And I Titan still in the lead, being joined now by Indiana on the sand side. And here comes Patty with a run on the sand side. Fun Seeker and White Labour under pressure. So is on Sidium. Two and a half furlongs to run. I Titan and Indiana, the two together from Patty in third place. And it's Indiana on the sand side as I Titan comes under pressure. Two furlongs out. Indiana, I think, has headed I Titan. I Titan's given all he's got, and Indiana has swept into a, a narrow lead, but he's holding on very well on the rails with I Titan. But Indiana has the lead. And it is Indiana that comes to the front from Patty with I Titan under pressure. Sodrini making late headway but the race is between Indiana and Patty as Patty comes with a tremendous race on the sand side but Indiana will not give in and here comes Patty and Indiana stride for stride for the line 25 yards to go Indiana and Patty locked together Indiana's one Patty's second the photograph of third place it's between I Tyson and Sardarini but uh, at last Indiana has I think got his nose in front in a classic race but the judge has called for the camera for a photograph but I think Indiana has beaten Patty as the two horses were locked together in a desperate struggle over the last 150 yards as I Titan gave way to Indiana it was Patty that was the most dangerous that's a personal opinion that Indiana has at last rewarded courage and consistency he's been narrowly beaten for two big prizes he was second in the derby to Santa Claus he was second in the Grand Prix to White Label and now at last he's come into his own with a magnificently game well judged uh, race ridden by Jimmy Lindley. That's a personal opinion because as they swept past the post there couldn't have been more than a head or a neck even in it and I'm not in a very good position here. I'm about 25 yards beyond the winning post and several times this meeting I've been wrong about the finish but I'm pretty certain that Indiana has held on to win a great race. No mistake about this. Due reward for his courage to win the St. Ledger for Mr. C.W. Engelhard, written by Jimmy Lindley and trained by Jack Watts. Uh, the camera to decide the winner, Patty, was, I think, second. This filly who really was up with the leaders most of the way, ridden by Bill Williamson, trained by Patty Prendergast in Ireland. And I think it's a photograph for third place. Undoubtedly, it's that very close. I'm not going to attempt to separate I Titan and Soderini, who finished absolutely together. Sodorini rather surprising because he ran uh, extremely well but the rest were absolutely outclassed no other horse had any chance at all in the race apart from the Indiana Patty and I type the rest were completely outclassed Indiana is the winner Indiana the winner Patty is second Sodorini is third and that means I Titan I think must be fourth and now for a summary here's Tony Preston well if Harold Abrahams had been giving this summary, I'm quite certain that he would have said the first leg was run in record time. They really went a tremendous pace. The two pacemakers for I-Titan, uh, 
were drawn on opposite sides of the gate. And uh, Dusselet was drawn one. He was in a perfect position to make the early running. But in fact, although he, he got a very quick break, almost immediately we saw impact, ridden by Willie Snaith, go off as if he was in a five furlong sprint. And much to my surprise, he held the lead for well over a mile, going a great gallop. So great a gallop, I would think, that he really ran Dieu Soleil, the second pacemaker, off his feet, because he never really took any part as a pacemaker. And in fact, for about a mile, it was Noel Merlis's three horses in line ahead. As they went past the mile post, Dieu Soleil began to weaken just a little. Indiana, at this stage of the proceedings, I would think was about six. Patty was always up just behind them, making uh, the best use of her stamina. And so the order went on, round this long bottom turn here, and as they came into the straight with four furlongs to go, I Titan had taken it up. He was quite definitely in the lead. As they swung into the straight, Indiana could be seen in the center of the course, take just about to start a very long and steady run. And so easy to enthuse about these results, but I think Jimmy Lindley rode an absolute peach of a race. I really do. He rode a magnificent race on this horse. I Titan was battling it out all the way up the straight, making his own running, as I say, with four furlongs to go. A furlong out. Indiana was very much the danger, with Patty coming very late on the scene, and then out of the ruck came Sodorini. 200 yards from home, without a doubt, I Titan was beaten, and the race was between Indiana and Patty. Indiana, by this time, had got onto the rails, past the weakening eye Titan, and they really were locked together, and with the tremendous desperation, he held on. I do think beautifully ridden by Lindley, but Patty, uh, equally well, lost absolutely nothing in defeat. But just as they approached the line, so this gallant horse suddenly seemed to poke his nose out, and it really is a triumph for his trainer. They'd been beaten in our derby, and then they went to France for this big race. Interesting, of course, that he won the Voltage uh, at York, admittedly only just scraping home, and I think I'm right in saying that the last three winners of that race have gone on to win the St. Ledger, which, of course, is interesting. This uh, race, uh, of course, was won by Sire Jarreau, the, the sire of Indiana, and, of course, this is yet another big winner for Mr. Engelhard, who owns uh, uh, an American owner who runs a lot of horses in this country and in France, and, of course, he's got the top two-year-old this year, double jump. And he, I understand, is over here today. And this, I think, is the first time he's seen this horse run in this country. He must be a very lucky man. It looked like being a most open race. The only blot on the horizon, really, was that Santa Claus was not a runner. Uh, one would have thought this was a chance for him to be really vindicated. And now the question mark is, will he run in France? If so, will Indiana take him on? I don't know. Indiana's had some hard races. He's done marvelously here. But still, a wonderful race, well worth watching and patience long rewarded with Indiana's victory. Thank you, Tony Preston. The starting price is Indiana, 100 to 7. Patty, 100 to 8. Sodorini, 45 to 1. That's a strange price, isn't it? 45 to 1, the third. I, Titan, fourth, was the 5 to 1 joint favorite with White Label, who was unplaced. The distance is ahead and four lengths. And I think I must pay tribute to Mr. David McCall, who manages uh, Mr. Engelhardt's interests over here and who buys all his yearlings. In fact, he bought Double Jump and Indiana. Well, well done, Indiana. A very gallant display by a horse who's always shown tremendous courage in his races but hasn't always had the luck. The luck went his way today and so the last of the classics really stays in England. That's the St. Ledger story. Goodbye from all of us here in Townmore. Four Champions Day, it's won by Baldrick from Lineker with Papira.